global warming, climate change, a carbon tax. What does it mean for manufacturing workers? What does it mean for our jobs? What does it mean for our families and the next generation? We need to know fact from fiction. What's real and what's just plain wrong? The risks and the opportunities. In August, our union came together to hear from the experts on the science, on the policy and on the new technology that could give Australian manufacturing a real future. Let's turn to what it means for Australia because it turns out that of the world's wealthiest countries, of the so-called OECD countries, Australia is the most vulnerable uh, to the impacts of climate change. We had excess deaths due to the heat wave in Melbourne. Uh, about double the number of people died in the heat wave than died in the bushfires. But there are some things we can't say for sure. Droughts will be more severe when they come simply because the temperature is higher. So the fires that we had around Canberra in 2003, uh, Victoria in 2009, Perth 2010 and 11, uh, we'll have more of those to come for sure. Sea level rise. Uh, that's one of the more certain ones. I showed you the graph earlier, earlier that sea level is coming up. Um, we're expecting, my best guess, is somewhere between half a meter and a meter this century. That'd be about 2100 uh, compared to 1990 levels. Here's an example of what that looks like. This is the Brisbane airport you might, might recognize. Uh, and the left-hand one is a, a Google Earth version of what it looks like today. The right one is we put a simple flooding model onto it, put 1.1 meters of sea level rise, which is the worst case scenario for 2100. You see that that piece of infrastructure is not viable. Sydney Airport's also in trouble uh, at about one meter sea level rise. The Earth is warming and there's other changes associated with that. Second of all, we know the reason, and that's the extra greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Third of all, it's presenting a lot of risks for us, for our kids and our grandkids. That message is really clear. And if, uh, and if they query you on that, that message comes from CSIRO, the Bureau of Meteorology, the best universities in Australia and our counterparts overseas. Any government taking that scientific advice and recognising these features has to design a policy response that is credible, that will reduce our levels of pollution over time, that will bring about economic change so that we continue to have jobs growth, employment growth, improvement in living standards, economic growth, but at the same time, we reduce our pollution levels. Essentially, what a price on carbon pollution is, is to say, well, as the electricity is generated, we've got to factor into the cost of that electricity production, the cost of the pollution, the, you know, the cost that it actually causes to our economy and environment. And so we put a price on it. There's about 500 odd companies that will have a liability to purchase a permit for every tonne of pollution they produce. That's all it is. 500 odd companies. And it's not a tax in the sense that it's just permanently there. A business can avoid paying or having to purchase the permits, paying the carbon price, if it can reduce or eliminate its pollution. It's a historic piece of policy work uh, for the economy and for the environment. And it's in fact a piece of policy from an economic point of view that if we use it well and work with it well, will be very good for the manufacturing industry. This is a massive, multi-billion dollar program to support jobs in manufacturing in particular. Now what's clean tech? We define it pretty simply as a clean technology product or service company that generates a superior commercial benefit to its competitor while also reducing the environmental impact and resource consumption. And since 2005, we've seen over 1,300 companies who come and knock on our door looking for investment funds to grow companies in the clean technology space. The point is, it's, it's a bloody big opportunity. Basically, even though there are a lot of headlines out there uh, that this will be the end of civilization as we know it, uh, it will add about 0.7% to the CPI. It works out to an average of about 10 bucks a week. Yeah. Basically, about 6 out of 10 of our members will get compensation equal or better than the $10 a week. There's probably about 30 to 35% of our members who will be out of pocket by 
uh, on average of two to three dollars. I put it to you that this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity we ought to go after, and it's one that we can do it so that we make the gear here. I thought it was fantastic, the presentation this morning. I mean, for me, I've always, I don't need to be convinced of the science, but what solidified for me was the urgency. Oh, there's a lot of debate, but um, I, I do believe in the science of it. I, I do believe that, you know, we are contributing. It is Australi Australians' taxpayers' money that we are re-putting back into the system. We should be also tying it to local jobs and local manufacturing to keep the jobs here, keep the industries here, and keep people working. What's come out of it is I realise that actually we're here to support a policy and a really important policy um, and a union policy rather than a, a, an ALP policy. I'm proud to be an AMW member today. I'm very proud of our, our policy and I'm proud that we're taking uh, climate change head on um, and I'm proud that what we're really doing, what our policy does, is it aims to secure a clean manufacturing technology uh, future for Australia and to secure, uh, the, secure the future for our kids, both environmentally and industrially. I have a young daughter, you know, what's her future going to be like when it comes to 2020, you know, 2050, you know, and if I have great grandchildren, you know, that's going to be a you know, pretty scary situation for them to go into. I mean, you know, what am I going to do about that now? And this is you know, what we can do. It is so vital as people of this country and progressive people and working people take this uh, climate issue now rather than wait for another 50 years. And the science is there and it's been proven and it's happening. So it's our duty now um, to take some action. Otherwise, our next generation will ask what we did for this because they are going to be in the middle of it. Our union has taken the position on, um, on the carbon tax and the government announcement as we see this as a major opportunity to secure the future of our manufacturing industry. Uh, we see this as a major economic reform in addition to dealing with the vex issue of tackling climate change. We've looked at the evidence on climate change, we've looked at the government's plan to deal with it uh, and we're going to campaign to ensure that the jobs of our members are safe and there are job opportunities for the future. Nothing matters more to us than our members, and nothing matters more to us than their jobs. Putting a price on carbon and investing $14.8 billion in clean technology is the best way to make sure manufacturing clean technology is Australia's future. We are supporting the plan for a clean energy future and we will keep campaigning until the government puts in place guarantees to make that technology in Australia. Manufacturing. Australia's future.